Hi everyone, today I will answer your questions from the comments. Starting with question number one, VitaFX from Discord asked, Hey guys, a quick question. Does anyone already coded a way how to make sure all the spreads for every backtest trade are calculated in the PNL? Would appreciate it to see how you have done it. Good question, VitaFX. So let's now go to Jupyter Notebook and I'll show you how I've done it. So we are now in our Jupyter Notebook and first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the required libraries. So we're going to import Pandas, Plotly, MetaTrader 5, DateTime and IPython to display. So let's run this. And to answer your first question, uh, how do you calculate the average spread on a symbol? So for those who don't know, the spread is basically the difference between the bid and ask price set by a broker and it is basically your trading fee. So the larger the spread, the more you pay. And to receive the spreads, we can simply get them from extracting the tick data from the MT5 platform. And to get the tick data, we first have to connect to MT5 using MT5.initialize. In this example, I'm going to extract data on GBPJPY for the past week. So I've set the time interval seven days ago until now. Using MT5 copy ticks range, we can then extract the tick data, and then I'm going to save the tick data into a pandas data frame, which is this part here. And the very simple formula to calculate the spread is simply taking the tickdf ask column and we subtract it with the tickdf bit column. So I display the df here and let's see what it looks like. Right, so you see this data frame here where we have the time, bit, and ask column. The spread column was calculated by taking the ask column and then subtracting the bit value from that. And uh, so basically now we have all the necessary data to calculate the spread. But what I'm also going to show you is that uh, ideally we want to filter out some text during low liquidity periods because these are periods where you usually don't trade. So in this case, I'm going to create a new column called the hour column, where I'm going to calculate the hour of that certain tick. So ticksdf hour is equal to ticksdf time, and by using the property dt.hour, we can extract the hour value from the data frame. So if we look at our data frame below, we see that, for example, the tick, which is the time uh, 2023, 11, 07, at 1922.16 has the hour value of 19. And so to calculate the average spread uh, for the time interval, interval between 2 and 22, all we have to do is save this filter diaphragm into uh, this takes the filter and calculate the average spread of that. So to, so to calculate the average spread, all we have to do is take this data frame then we take the spread column and then we calculate the mean value. And then what I did is I printed this value, average spread, which you can see down here. So the average spread uh, of the broker that I'm showing you is 0 0.00775. So now that we've calculated the average spread, which is 0 0.00775, that is, uh, I believe, 0 0.77 pips on GBPJPY. Uh, that would translate to around five US dollars per lot if you were going to trade with a broker, right? And so the next step is, or to answer the next part of the question, uh, VitaFX asks how we can implement this average spread into our PNL backtest. So now let's get back to our Jupyter Notebook and I'm going to show you the second part how to backtest this. All right, so I have prepared some code on this uh, example backtest. So let's continue uh, with working with GBPJPY. And based on our previous calculation, uh, the average spread is around 0 0.00775. So uh, when I was writing this code, this value has uh, shifted a bit. So I'm just going to use the new values here. So this would be the average spread. And uh, what I also added is the contract size per lot. So to, this will be important to calculate the, the fees during the backtest. And also I added the conversion to ESD, 
because if you look, we're trading GBP JPY, our profits are going to be denominated in the Japanese yen. So this is simply the USD JPY exchange rate using one divided by 151 to convert the JPY into USD. So this is the formula to calculate the spread fee uh, per lot in USD. So we have to simply take the average spread, which we have, which we have here, we multiply it by the contract size of the uh, of the lots, right? So one lot on GBP JPY is 100,000, and the conversion to USD is one divided uh, by 151. Of course, that depends on the current exchange rate. And then we also have a second type of uh, fee, which is the commission per trade. So the broker would charge you usually seven US dollars per lot. So these are the two uh, commission values that you'd have to work with. And what I've prepared is a CSV file with some sample trades that we can use for backtesting. So let's run this. So this CSV file uh, that uh, I've shown you here, which is the GBP JPY backtest sample.csv, is this data frame down here. And uh, so what we have here is the calculated profit, but this profit is without commissions and without spread. So it is basically our gross profit. So to calculate the fee columns, what we have to do is basically we have the spread fee per lot value. So if we multiply this value with the number of lots that we are trading, we would get the spread fee. And of course we have to multiply it by minus one because we are deducting uh, money from uh, the, the, the trade or from the profit. And for a commission, it's very similar. So we have to multiply the volume lots times commissions per lots and again, minus one because again, we're paying money to a broker. And the formula to calculate the net profit of our trade is trades DF profit plus trades DF spread fee, which is the fee for spread, plus trades DF commission, which is the commission to a broker. And what we have here is the are the columns calculated. So we have the spread fee here. And we can see that when we're trading one lot on GPP JPY, uh, we are paying approximately 5.13 USD in spread fees, right? Uh, the commission is seven, this doesn't change. So if we see that here we have the profit, the gross profit of 285, the net profit would be around 12 US dollars less, which we can see here. And the last thing I did is I calculated the cumulative PNL so we can compare these two curves. And this is going to be very interesting now because now you're going to see uh, what difference it makes when you uh, account for commissions and spreads, right? So if you scroll down here, I've created a PNL chart. The blue one is just a gross profit without any commission and spreads. And the red line is the net PNL, which has deducted the spreads and commissions already. So this strategy, which is actually a backtest of my London breakout system, uh, has made about 14,000 USD in gross PNL. But if you take uh, the commissions into account, uh, you would have only made around 7,400 USD, which is almost half of your profits gone simply due to commission and spreads. So thank you VitaFX for asking the question. I will upload the code on my Discord channel in the resources channel where you can check it out for yourself and let me know if that helps you. All right, let's have a look at our second question. And H2LYB on YouTube asks, how could we make larger candle patterns dynamic? For example, line, 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 line. I'm creating a variable for the close prices, pulling the last 10 or so closes and programming that pattern with an if statement. The problem is these patterns don't come in a set amount of candles, it's dynamic. Is there a way we can make it so that pattern could be recognized regardless of how many candles are in it? All right, so let's now get back to our Jupyter Notebook and let's see what we can do. So if I understand correctly, uh, you want to analyze a uh, candlestick pattern with the candle sample size of let's say 10. 
So I have set it here. So let's say count samples is set to 10 and we're going to extract OHSC data from GPPJPY. So just for example, I'm taking the M15 timeframe for the past one week on GPPJPY and using MT5 copyrights range, we can extract the OHLC data, which is this code block here. And so what I'm going to do is first, let me show you what the OHLCDF looks like, which is uh, this part here. Here we see time, open, high, low, close values, which are important for the candlestick recognition. But the problem is that we have these open, high, low, close values in single columns. And I would like to have these values, uh, let's say in a dictionary, right? In a single column. So what I made here is I am creating a dictionary that is containing the time, open, high, low, close values in a single column. So by running this, I created this kind of column here, which contains all these values on the left in a single dictionary. And so the next thing we can do is we can try to save the last 10 candles uh, in a candle group. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to take our candle column, which is here, and using the rolling method in pandas, we can take a window sample of the previous uh, 10 values, which is our candle sample here, and save them in a list. So this entire part here is basically doing nothing else than, for example, if we have uh, a candle group here, we're saving the last 10 candles uh, inside this single cell. So this is how you would save uh, a sample of 10. And in the next example, I'm going to show you how you can use this, these candles, for example, to find candlestick patterns. So in my next coding part, I'm also going to include another question because it is very similar regarding the candlestick pattern recognition. And Fennec OGX from YouTube asked, we need three outside up candlestick pattern bot for MT5. And just to clarify, I asked, hi, you mean three bullish candles in a row? And then Fennec replied, no, I mean the first candle will be red, the second candle will be engulfing, and the third candle will be green and it will close in two days, which is an extra information. So let's try to uh, find this pattern that Fene gave us in our next code coding part. So here it is, uh, the three outside up candlestick pattern. So just to quickly summarize the conditions, the first candle is red, the second candle is bullish, engulfing, and the third candle is green, so also bullish. And so by reading these conditions, I immediately know that the candle samples or the number of candles for this pattern is equal to three because we just need three candles to identi identify it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse the code that I've shown you uh, in the previous cell regarding finding, uh, you know, a candlestick pattern of 10. But in this case, we're applying it only for three candles. So we're extracting data from GBPJPY, which is the same. We're saving the OHS data in the data frame. We're saving the candle inside a dictionary. And then we're creating a candle group containing the previous three candles, right? So what's new here is we are creating, uh, we are defining a new function that will find the pattern, the three outside up. Uh, and so basically if, uh, inside our candle group, we only have two or less candles. Uh, we don't need this because we don't have sufficient candles. That can happen if we are uh, rolling in a window in the beginning. So probably this and this, when we're uh, grouping these candles, we only will have two candles maximum. So in this case, uh, we just return false. And so our first candle would be the, the first candle in the list from you know, from, from the end. The second candle would be second candle from the end and the third candle would be the third candle from the end, in, in which case it would be the first one. So uh, ignore this. I've added that just to check uh, some candle values. So let's now look at the conditions, right? So the first candle is red. 
So what defines a bearish candle? A bearish candle is defined by the candle having the close price less than its open price. So candle one close is less than candle one open. So this condition uh, is met. Second condition uh, is that the second candle is bullish engulfing. So first of all, the second candle must be bullish, which means that the candle to close value must be greater than the candle to open value. And uh, for it to be engulfing, the close value of candle two must be greater than the high value of candle one by definition. And lastly, the third condition is the third candle must be bullish. So this is very simple. So candle three close must be greater than candle three open. So if all three conditions are met, we just return true for this function. Otherwise we return false. So if you want to find the three outside up candle pattern. All we have to do is we just assign it to a new column. We take the candle group that we've created here and it's this column here and we will apply this find pattern function. So what we'll get here is a data frame and it's the last one here, which will find these candles. And to prove to you that uh, this uh, pattern recognition works is I've created a simple candlestick chart where I'm going to take all the patterns of my OHSCDF where the pattern is true and I will plot this in my plotly figure. So we'll do that and in this figure here we see that I've added vertical lines so wherever we have a vertical line that would mean that we have a three outside up pattern. So again, let's try it with this example here. We have a bullish, I mean, sorry, a bearish candle here with a bullish engulfing. The high, I'm sorry, the, the close price of the second candle is greater than the high price of the first candle. And the third candle is bullish, right? So this condition is met here. Let's try other examples. Let's try here, for example. So we see another bearish candle here the second candle is bullish engulfing, which means that the close price of this candle is greater than the high of this candle. And the third candle is bullish. So you can try it with all those examples here. But if you look through other examples, again, bearish, bullish engulfing, bullish. Thank you very much for posting your questions. I had a lot of fun answering them and I hope that you were able to learn something from it. If you want to download uh, my Jupyter Notebook uh, from this video, uh, you can go to my Discord channel. I will add a link in the description and I will upload it into the resources section of Discord. Also, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask in the help me section of Discord and whenever I'll have time, I'll try to answer it or make a video about it. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.